Hello, welcome back to Storytime. My name is Josh. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to be reading another story today from the Mr. Men Library. It's called Mr. Nosy. Does that guy look nosy? Yeah. <laughs> All right, hope you're comfortable. Get ready because we're about to delve into story time. All right. Mr. Nosy liked to know about everything that was going on. He was always poking his nose into other people's business. Mr. Nosy was the sort of person who, if he came upon a locked door, he couldn't resist looking through the keyhole to see why the door had been locked. Mr. Nosy was the sort of person who, if he found an unopened letter addressed to somebody else, would simply have to open it to find out what was inside. That's very rude. <laughs> Mr. Nosy was sort of a person who, if he was sitting reading his paper on a train, would much rather read the paper of the person sitting next to him. Look at Mr. Nosy's nose creeping in. He's reading his paper. Or is he? Being a little bit nosy. <laughs> Naturally, as you might as well imagine, Mr. Nosy was not very popular. People did not like the way in which Mr. Nosy would peek and pry into their affairs. They did not like it at all. But did that stop Mr. Nosy peeking and prying? It did not. It's not good to be nosy. Mr. Nosy lived in a funny, tall, thin house in a place called Tittletown. The people of Tittletown decided that Mr. Nosy was becoming much too nosy, and they held a meeting to discuss what to do about him. Yeah, that's his house there. A tall house. We must find some way of stopping him being so nosy, said old Mr. Chips, the town carpenter. Mr. Chips. That's right, said Mrs. Washer, who ran the Tilltown Laundry. He needs to be taught a lesson. Mrs. Washer. He's like, do something about it. If only we could think of a way to stop him poking his nose into everything, said Mr. Brush the painter. And then a small smile spread over his face. Listen, he said, now grinning, I have a plan. All his friends gathered round to listen to his plan. There's Mr. Brush. His moustache even looks like a brush. The following morning, Mr. Nosy was out walking along Tittletown High Street when he heard somebody whistling behind one of the closed doors. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself. And tiptoeing up to the door, he quietly opened it and peeped in. Mr. Nosy. wonder what he's going to get himself into. Uh-oh. Splash! Went a very wet paintbrush right on the end of Mr. Nosy's nose, covering it with bright red paint. You can see there. So Mr. Brush might have organized some kind of little paint trick. This is when Mr. Nosy gets nosy. Doink! Paint. Oh dear, I am sorry, said Mr. Brush. Who was painting the inside of the door? <laughs> Mr. Nosy had to go straight home to try and remove the red paint, which was very difficult and rather painful. Mr. Brush chuckled to himself. The plan had begun. So that's just the beginning of the plan. The following day, Mr. Nosy was walking past the laundry when he heard somebody laughing on the other side of the wall. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself. Standing on tiptoe, he looked over the wall. There he is there, having a peep. And what's going to happen here? Snap! Went a clothes peg right on the end of Mr. Nosy's nose. Uh-oh. That would hurt. Got him. Oh. oh dear, I am sorry, said Mrs. Washer, who was hanging up clothes on a washing line on the other side of the wall. Poor Mr. Nosy removed the clothes peg and went off down the street, feeling extremely sorry for himself and for his poor red nose. Mr. Washer chuckled to herself. The plan was working. The next day, Mr. Nosy was going past a fence when he heard hammering. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself, creeping very quietly to the end of the fence. He peeped around. Bang! 
went to hammer right on the end of Mr. Nosey's nose. Ouch. Oh dear, I am sorry, said old Mr. Chips, who was nailing up a loose plank on the fence. Poor Mr. Nosey had to go home immediately and bandage his poor red sore nose. Mr. Chips grinned a broad grin. The plan was working very well indeed. I think Mr. Chips was maybe a little bit hardcore. You wouldn't want to nail someone's nose with a hammer. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> the following day, Mr. Nosey was walking in the woods when he heard somebody sawing wood. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself. He crept up behind a tree. He was just about to peer out from behind a tree when suddenly it occurred to him that if he did, something very nasty might happen to his nose. And so he went on his way without being nosy. Behind the tree with a saw, raised his hand, stood Mr. Hurd, the farmer. When he saw that Mr. Nosy had gone his way without being nosy, he laughed and laughed and laughed. The plan had worked. Mr. Hurd hurried into Tittletown to tell everybody. Yeah, lucky Mr. Nosy wasn't nosy. Mr. Hurd, the farmer, he was sawing something. Clearly he was trying to saw off his nose. Mr. Hurd, the farmer. Not cool, man. Not cool. That's rough. <laughs> the plan really had worked because after that, Mr. Nosy stopped being nosy and soon became very good friends with everybody in Tittletown. And that is the end of the story. Except to say that if you're ever tempted to be as nosy as Mr. Nosy used to be, you better expect one thing. A sore nose. Well, there you go. That's Mr. Nosy by Roger Hargreaves. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the story today. And I'll be back again with another story really soon. Bye for now, but not forever. And if you like watching these, please subscribe.